step three, what's the reason for a viewer to read or to be interested? This might be the hardest thing and sometimes, I have to be honest, I turned down stories and I couldn't even give a really good explanation other than it was a gut feeling or I just knew that the readers wouldn't be interested. But I'm going to try and give some guidelines. So first off, transferable lessons. Is there something that you can talk about that other people can learn from? That's one of the first things, especially when we're doing B2B. Is there something in your column or the story that's new that somebody else in a similar position can learn from you. Can you write a column that's a top 10 bullet point list? A Couple of reasons why these are really, really good. You probably know yourself. When you see one, they're really easy to consume. As an editor, they're really easy to cut. So your top 10 becomes your top eight or top five if we don't have enough space, but we just cut out the bullet points. Um, they're very succinct. And so there's not a lot of wasted material or wasted words. They usually solve a problem um, and, so they're, and they're very to the point. So this is a, a type of column that is very consumable and editors and producers really like. Now do you add to the discussion that's going on? This refers again to that, let's, if we think about that government creeping on Facebook, if you think about a trend story or if there's a new story going on, um, is there something that you can talk about? Maybe there are rumors that you're going to dispel or confirm. Uh, can you give an opposing point of view? If you see something in the media, even if you see something online, but maybe you want to write a letter to the editor, to a, uh, the Vancouver Sun, if you have an opposing point of view that not many people know about or have written about, that's a really good way to get in. It's a good way to pitch a story or even write a letter to the editor. And in that regard, a lot of people ask me, well, what's the point of writing a letter to the editor? If you had a point of view on that uh, government creeping Facebook and you wanted to write in and say, oh, people are blowing it out of proportion, it, it really doesn't matter, um, you know, I've been a Facebook consultant for 12 years and I can tell you this comes up every three years or whatever it is. When you send a letter to the editor, nine times out of ten it's read. Because editors love reading letters to the editor, especially when they're controversial, not when they're too crazy, but if they've got something really emotional or something relevant to say, then we'll read it. It goes right to the editor or maybe an associate editor. And that means your name and what you do has now been seen by the editor. So if I read that letter, I now know here's a person who has expertise in Facebook. If I want to then do a story later on or I want to follow up with a story right away, I'm going to contact them. Because we generally don't like Googling people for experts. We don't know who they are. You know, it takes a lot of time. Uh, reporters especially if they're you know, have been at work all day and it's like six o'clock and they have to find an expert, they really don't want to start Googling. So if they've collected names of experts, they'll go to them first. So a letter to the editor, you can write one up in maybe 20 minutes, half an hour. If you express yourself well, you have a, an interesting point, and at the end you can say, I've got 12 years experience in this or three years experience in that, you now have a little leg into or foot in the door when it comes to that media. Uh, and do you help solve people's problems? So again, whether you're pitching the idea of an expert column or you're interested in having people interview you as part of a bigger story, is there something that you can talk about that will solve somebody else's problem? Now, how to write the pitch that gets open. So this is another and probably one of the biggest challenges because of that issue of time. You want to make sure, number one, that your subject line is looked at and has something compelling. And I'll say right now that I tell my clients, after you've sent an email, print it out and mail it to the medium. Because now, because there's so much email to go through, <laughs> as an editor, I would get like five pieces of mail. I would just sit there opening my mail as I'm scanning through my inbox, but I'd read every piece of mail. Mm -hmm. Or send a panty in the mail. 
Or send, yeah, send a panty. <laughs> you can send a panty in the mail, too. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that panty reference was in, in regard to uh, some Q&A we had for a different business um, earlier on. I don't even remember it. <laughs> Panties by post, that's right. You're right. Panties by post. So um, how to write the pitch that gets open? Maybe the biggest question, and I will point out as well, a lot of my clients are using the strategy for general communication because they find that it works with people who are busy, which is pretty much everybody. So, oh. Uh, first of all, you're going to identify which publication or section that you're submitting the pitch for. So I showed you the sections earlier, like hospitality and tourism or small business. You want to make sure that's really clear. If you happen to be pitching to a publishing house like Canada Wide that has a lot of magazines and you don't know exactly who the editor is, you want to reference the magazine right at the beginning of the pitch, of the subject line. Inside the email, you want to be very clear in bullet point. You want to make sure you connect your expertise, which we talked about earlier, is the first thing you need to know, with what they need. So it's kind of like you're saying, I'm the puzzle piece that's going to complete or help you complete your puzzle. And submitting it well in advance. I spoke about that a bit earlier too. So here's some examples of subject lines. If you know that you want to put something in a section, small business section, marketing column. Very clear, so if I'm editing that section, it'll stand out for me. Sometimes when I was, you know, getting close to deadline, I would just do a search for the words small business section to see if I had missed an email that actually had that in the subject line. Uh, government creeping Facebook, expert response, that's going to draw my attention too. First of all, though, if I didn't hear about this news item, government creeping Facebook would definitely <laughs> draw my attention. And expert response tells me that the person sending it has some expertise that I might be interested in looking at. And then finally, the last is a sample of a, 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 an actual title of a column that you want, might want to write. The influx of Gen Y is destroying social media. So this is kind of an opinion column. You're taking your sample title, you're dropping it right into the subject line. It's something that grabs my attention, but it is also clear on what the topic is. Make sure your words are specific and understandable, not vague. If I get a subject line that says, how to turn over a new leaf, like, <laughs> really, you know? And um, you know, as, as much as Matt says the word hey seems to work for him, I won't open anything that says hey in the subject line. And six words, six words is all you've got. That's the time we have to read. And if we're looking at, on a, at a smartphone, that's all we see. So don't go on. If there's anything afterwards, make sure it's not that relevant. This is a sample of not a good pitch. This I received last month from a professional PR agency. This is why I started this whole thing a year and a half ago because businesses were not being served by the PR agencies. They're using very outdated methods of communication. This was only half the pitch. This was the bottom part of the pitch. There was another part on the top which I didn't bother putting in. But this was the event pitch. It was for the wellness show that was in January or February. I don't remember, January 12th. And this is exactly what it looked like. 